aggressive driving. This project is called Understanding Aggressive Driving and Ways to Reduce It. It's a phase one project and it's sponsored by the Traffic Safety Culture Transportation Pooled Fund Program. Um, if you're interested in more information about the Traffic Safety Culture Pooled Fund, you can find um, more information about it on the Montana Department of Transportation's website. We are using WebEx for our presentation today, and many of you are very familiar with this platform, but just in case, a few items to point out. Uh, first, we're gonna record this webinar, and it will be available on our YouTube channel. You can join the audio either by phone or from your computer. And if you're having trouble hearing or wanna change how you're listening to the webinar, you can click those three dots at the bottom of your screen for options on ways to connect to the audio. Um, and, and finally, please feel free to use the chat function to send in any questions that you have. Uh, I'll review those questions at the end um, of our webinar today, and we can answer those at that time. My colleagues, Bridget Hansen and Anne-Marie McMahill, are also supporting this webinar today and um, can troubleshoot any WebEx problems that you might have if you want to re just reach out, feel free to reach out if you need any help with any of that. I am Carrie Finley, I'm a co-director and a research scholar at the Center for Health and Safety Culture. At the Center for Health and Safety Culture, we're an interdisciplinary center that conducts research on how culture impacts health and safety. We conduct applied research all in partnership with communities and state, tribal and national organizations who want to improve health and safety in their communities and organizations. And all of our research is applied really with folks trying to make a difference. Our work covers these four issues predominantly, but, and together, if you think about these issues, they have a profound impact on public health. They really are the leading causes of years of potential life loss, and they overlap. We know that the misuse of substances has a big impact on traffic safety, and likewise, violence and child maltreatment are impacted by substances, and all of them are interconnected. And so it's interesting at the federal and state and community levels that these issues are addressed in different ways. It's interesting to see how departments of transportation, for example, approach behavior change and health and safety and compare those efforts to reducing underage drinking or domestic violence. Working in these different areas is really insightful for us. And our big picture is to really step back and look at an overall approach that can transcend any of these issues. I'm the principal investigator for uh, the aggressive driving project that we're gonna talk about today. But I had a lot of help from my colleagues at the Center for Health and Safety Culture in this research project too. Specifically, Kelly Green and Jay Otto and Bridget Hansen, um, who's on this call, was one of the lead analysts for our survey data. Kelly Green supported the literature review and, and Jay Otto supported the survey development. So this project was definitely a collective research effort from all of our team at the Center for Health and Safety Culture. When we think about traffic safety, we often think about traffic crashes. We know traffic crashes are a major public health concern. In 2022 alone, 42,795 people in the US lost their lives in traffic crashes. There are many different causes that contribute to traffic crashes, and we know that aggressive driving is considered a leading cause. It's been estimated that aggressive driving is a cause in approximately 56% of fatal crashes. We know that aggressive driving is considered a common behavior among drivers. In a study by the AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety, approximately 80% of drivers reported expressing anger, aggression, or road rage while driving at least once in the past 30 days. There has been some evidence to suggest that people's perceptions that others are driving more aggressively has increased in the past five years and that aggressive driving increased especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Right now, 
the evidence that aggressive driving frequency is actually increasing is not conclusive. But we do know that aggressive driving does contribute to negative traffic safety outcomes. And despite knowing that aggressive driving contributes to negative traffic safety outcomes, we also know that it's prevalent. And this, um, the, the Traffic Safety Culture Pooled Fund Group really recognized that aggressive driving is a behavior in need of attention and that there were some gaps that we wanted to know more about and to understand about aggressive driving, which is where this aggressive driving project began. The members of the Traffic Safety Culture Pooled Fund really wanted to learn more about aggressive driving and ways to reduce it. And in working together, we really decided on a two-phase approach to this project that that might be our best approach. So in the first phase of the project, which is what I'm going to talk about today, um, the pool fund group really wanted to learn more and dig deeper into aggressive driving. And so we started with a focus on the current literature. We recognized that there were a lot of different definitions of aggressive driving and that they varied and that there was a lack of really shared and widely used definitions of aggressive driving. We knew that if we were going to move forward in creating strategies to reduce aggressive driving, that it would be important to have a shared definition to define aggressive driving as a distinct form of risky driving. So one of our goals in this project was to develop a shared definition of aggressive driving. Further, we recognized the need for a model, a contextual model to really explain the occurrence of aggressive driving. And we used the literature review to understand what contextual models were out there, what had been created, and what could we use or adapt for our efforts to address aggressive driving. As part of the project, we conducted a survey of road users to help us really understand aggressive driving behavior and to understand potential points of intervention. And we gathered a lot of interesting data, which I will share some of that today with you. And then finally, the pooled fund group really wanted to understand, based on the information that we gathered, how traffic safety professionals could bolster their, their current strategies to address aggressive driving. And that led us to create a resource for traffic safety practitioners about ways that they could bolster their current efforts in traffic safety to address aggressive driving. And I'm going to show you that today as well. So my hope for today is to take you on this journey through the project, highlighting some of the key things that we learned in phase one, some important takeaways and actions that can help you address aggressive driving in your work. Specifically, uh, we'll seek to answer these questions. How can we define aggressive driving? What factors contribute to aggressive driving? How can we explain the occurrence of aggressive driving? What did we learn from a survey? about aggressive driving, and how can we bolster our current traffic safety strategies to address aggressive driving? So my hope in providing this overview of our phase one aggressive driving project is that you're going to be curious and interested to explore the final report for this phase of the project. Uh, the final report has a lot of detail that I'm not going to be able to cover today, um, but it also has the final report and the resource that we created for this project are all on the Montana Department of Transportation's website. So I put a QR code here for easy access for you. And I hope in that talking through what we learned today that it'll spark your interest um, and, and continue to think about and help us in thinking up through a phase two project as well. So let's dig in and start with answering the question, how do we define, how can we define aggressive driving? Aggressive driving is really an umbrella term. Um, it's often used to describe a variety of risky behaviors. It's been used to describe behaviors like speeding, tailgating, um, failing to yield, preventing others from passing, running stoplights or red lights, yelling or honking your horn, you know, using profanity or obscene gestures, um, abruptly braking or cutting someone, uh, another driver off on purpose. Some definitions of aggressive driving 
really do emphasize a driver's intention to engage in risky behaviors. But other definitions don't. Other definitions say that aggressive driving includes any dangerous driving behavior, regardless of intent. So which is it? To complicate it even more, some definitions have also focused on a driver's affect. Essentially, what is the person's state or their mood? And how does that mood or their state influence their driving? Some definitions uh, seek to try to determine the driver's affect at the time of driving and indicate that the focus of the driving behavior is really based on mood or affect like frustration or annoyance or hostility or anger or impatience. With all of these varying definitions, a consistent and widely used definition hasn't really been well established, making it difficult to know what's meant by aggressive and, and whether that's a label that describes the state of the driver or the effect of the behavior. And just to pique your curiosity, one of the tasks in the literature review was to start to collect those various definitions of aggressive driving and then give examples of, of how that ha those definitions have been operationalized. So if you're curious and you wanna go to that final report, there are a variety of different definitions. And I think this really highlighted the need for a shared definition of aggressive driving. So to avoid some of those pitfalls and previous criticisms of different aggressive driving definitions, like they're too general or they're all, encompass, uh, all encompassing, we attempted to start to clarify, like, what were some of the important defining elements of a definition? Some of those defining elements that we thought were important as we really dug into the literature were that aggression is a behavior, not an emotion or an attitude. It's observable and it requires action. So thinking about making an aggressive mood or feeling angry is not aggression. We propose that a definition really should be limited to a specific form of behavior, not thoughts or feelings. Another defining element was that the driver's intention is critical. Intention helps us to distinguish aggressive behavior from other risky or dangerous behaviors. So we propose that negative intentionality is an important feature that we wanted to capture in a definition of aggressive driving. The driver's intention to engage in aggressive behaviors while driving really might provide us some insight into the driver's motivation and ultimately what intervention might be needed. And then finally, another critical defining element of a definition was context is critical. Aggressive driving must be situated within the context of others. So a behavior is not considered aggressive if it doesn't occur in the context of another person, another driver or a pedestrian. So speeding, for example, might be considered aggressive driving behavior when it impacts other road users. The, like for example, the other driver has to slow down or, or move over. However, speeding on a highway or an isolated road with no other road users would not constitute aggressive driving behavior, but would instead be considered risky or, or maybe careless. We felt as though this distinction that aggressive driving behavior occurs within the context of others might offer some clarity on what behaviors are considered aggressive and what behaviors aren't. So given what we learned in the literature review and in clarifying some of those important defining elements, we proposed that the AAA Foundation's definition of aggressive driving did provide a really strong foundation, but required an important addition. The definition that they use um, is any unsafe driving behavior performed deliberately and with ill intention or disregard for safety. However, we thought that an important definition uh, addition was needed, and that was to account for the behavior in the context of others. 
we thought that without that important contextual addition, a behavior like not wearing a seatbelt might meet the definition of aggressive driving. Now, we acknowledge that the context of others might be assumed in the AAA's foundation's definition, but also argue that explicitly adding that element of others to the definition does add clarity in distinguishing aggressive driving behaviors from other behaviors that are risky but not aggressive. So we proposed the following definition of aggressive driving, building on the AAA's foundation um, definition. Any unsafe driving behavior that is performed deliberately with ill intention or disregard for safety and impacts others. A common um, definition, having that common definition or a shared definition of aggressive driving really can help us know exactly what it is, what behavior it is that is being studied. It can help us to distinguish aggressive behaviors from other similar behaviors, um, similar risky behaviors. It can provide us with a foundation for growing a body of literature and that seeks to measure the construct, to measure aggressive driving. It can help us to develop interventions that might reduce the prevalence of the behavior. And a shared definition was really an important outcome for this project as it provided that foundation. So in addition to defining aggressive driving, our literature review also focus on factors contributing to aggressive driving. And we know from the literature that aggressive driving has been framed in a number of different ways. It's been framed as a personality characteristic of a person. It's been framed as a response to a specific situation. And it's been, it's been framed as a combination of both of those. So in attempting to understand aggressive driving, we focused on exploring both individual factors of the driver and situational factors that might contribute to aggressive driving. So when we think about what factors contribute to aggressive driving, we looked at what, what were some of those individual factors. And there are a lot of studies out there that, um, that talk about and have studied different factors contributing to aggressive driving. Um, when we think about the many studies that have examined characteristics of the driver that might be related to aggressive driving, we know from the literature that personality traits like a person's um, propensity for sensation seeking, their propensity for impulsiveness, their ability um, to consider future consequences, uh, trait anger, those are examples of some of the individual personality traits that are associated with aggressive driving. We also know that a person's emotions can influence aggressive driving. A person's affect, their mood, and their emotional intelligence can influence aggressive driving behavior. And then a person's cognition or how they think about a road situation that they're in can influence aggressive driving. So for example, some common anger increasing thoughts might be to have a thought that like overgeneralizes a traffic situation. So something like, oh my gosh, I'm in this traffic and there's always a billion people on the road. Or making a hostile attribution uh, for another road user's action. Like, oh, he cut me off on purpose or he did that on purpose. Or something like, he deserves to be run off the road. We also know that our perceptions of other drivers' behaviors can influence our tendencies to engage in aggressive behaviors when driving. So, for example, if we perceive that another driver's behavior was unintentional or was a mistake or an error on their part, we might react less aggressively than if we think that they did that on purpose. Um, how we, so our perceptions uh, of other drivers' behaviors and our beliefs about that does influence our own reactions or aggressive behaviors. 
In addition to individual factors, we also know there, there, there are several studies out there that have examined the influence of situational factors on aggressive driving. These situational factors have been called in the literature aggressive cues, um, which essentially accumulate or combine with other things going on in the environment um, to, to produce an aggressive response in a driver. Things that impede driving, like traffic congestion, road construction, or red lights even, are examples of aggressive cues that can contribute to aggressive driving. Other examples of situational factors that have been found to contribute to aggressive driving include things like being time pressured or having that sense of urgency, like I need, I'm need, i running late, I need to be somewhere. Those all can, uh, can contribute to an aggressive response, being late for an important appointment. There's been a lot of factors. Um, out there and a lot of research on factors that contribute to aggressive driving behavior. So next, we wanted to explore how to explain the occurrence of aggressive driving. So one objective of this project was to develop a contextual model of aggressive driving based on what was learned from the literature um, and the review of, uh, of existing models Instead of creating a new contextual model, we actually decided to use the contextual model developed by Solman and Stevens, which what they did is they applied the general aggression model to aggressive driving. And then what we ended up doing is adding traffic safety culture to their model to illustrate the influence of traffic safety culture on aggressive driving. We selected Solman and Stevens model because it was based on a widely utilized um, model of aggression that's been used extensively in the literature called the general aggression model. And then they applied it to a driving context. So the general aggression model is it's a really commonly used framework for understanding aggression broadly. And it's been applied to driving. It's been applied to aggressive driving to illustrate how a driving encounter might result in aggressive, uh, in aggressive driving. So this model describes the process in three phases, input, route, and outcome. And if you think about this contextual model, these are different places where different points of intervention could be implemented. The model suggests that aggression relies on an emotional response a driver has to a situation. So in this model, um, these would be considered routes. These are the emotional response responses that a driver has. The emotional response a driver has differs, obviously, according to who the driver is and the circumstances of their situation. And the situation itself in this contextual model has been labeled as the input. Um, and that include, could include things like traffic congestion or something that is impeding travel progress. And then the resulting behaviors or the outcomes will also depend upon the appraisal of the situation that's made by the driver, who then will evaluate that and decide um, on, on the next appropriate response. So this model, will be important when we think about intervention and at which different points of intervention could be implemented when we're trying to reduce aggressive driving. That was a really um, brief explanation of the model. Um, more information about this contextual model and details about it. Um, and then also various interventions that reduce aggressive driving and their efficacy are presented in the final report for this project. So if you're interested, a lot more information on that in the final report. In addition to the literature review and understanding those factors and developing a contextual model, we also set out to, um, to conduct a survey, to develop and conduct a survey. We developed a survey to assess the prevalence and correlates of aggressive driving behavior. And we used what we learned in the literature review and included two validated scales 
in the survey. The one was the, it's called the PADI. It's the pro-social and aggressive driving inventory. And another validated scale called the driving anger expression inventory, the DAX. We used those validated scales. We also included questions on the survey to gather information about perceived norms and additional experiences that people had with aggressive driving. In our survey, we described aggressive driving behaviors without using the word aggressive. And instead, we provided examples of driving actions that might be considered aggressive. aggressive. Things like cutting off another vehicle and braking hard, tailgating a slower vehicle, ignoring the right of way to beat another vehicle, and responding to other drivers with rude gestures or excessive honking. So instead of using the word aggressive, we actually started to define aggressive driving actions um, and used that in our survey. We also gathered information about driving history and, and um, demographics. So the survey was completed um, by U.S. drivers in the summer of 2023. The survey was completed by 841 adult U.S. drivers. We used Qualtrics, which is an online um, purchase panel. The demographics of the sample really did approximate the U.S. population in age and gender, race and ethnicity, and the state of residence. Uh, participants were from 49 states, all except Vermont and the District of Columbia. So first, we wanted to look at how many participants reported any aggressive driving. And we learned that the vast majority of participants, 90%, over 90%, report engaging in, reported engaging in at least one aggressive driving behavior, sometimes or more frequently. So we definitely learned that it, it was a, um, a behavior that people did identify with um, and, and reported engaging in. The PADI that, um, that we talked about engaging, um, the PADI is um, a validated scale, and it's useful to explore driving behaviors in general. And so we wanted to further explore how many participants engaged in pro-social and aggressive driving behaviors. And we grouped the participants, um, we grouped their responses into three groups to really explore um, their responses around prosocial and aggressive behaviors. We grouped them into the rarely group, the sometimes group, and the often group. And so when we grouped them into these three groups, we found that the overwhelming majority of participants, 91%, reported engaging in prosocial driving behaviors often while driving. And pro-social driving behaviors included things like yielding when the right-of-way belongs to another driver, using turn signals. Those were some of the examples. And most participants reported really actually rarely engaging in some of those aggressive driving behaviors, like speeding up when another vehicle tries to try and overtake them. When we looked at what were the most common and frequent pro-social behaviors that drivers reported engaging in? These were the top pro-social behaviors. Using turn signals to notify other drivers of their intention to turn. Paying attention to traffic and, and their surroundings when driving. Using mirrors, checking blind spots when changing lanes. And driving with extra care around pedestrians. Some of, the most some of the most frequent aggressive behaviors that drivers reported engaging in included things like honking when another driver does something inappropriate, passing other vehicles using the right lane, following a slower vehicle at less than a car length, and accelerating into an intersection when the traffic light is changing from yellow to red. So those were some of the most common aggressive behaviors that people uh, reported engaging in, in this survey. We also wanted to look at how, how participants respond when they feel angry while they're driving. We use the driving anger expression inventory, uh, which is a, valid a validated scale to assess this. And the DAX uses um, items that ask participants about their responses when they experience anger while they're driving. 
with options that are either positive or and adaptive, things like I think of positive solutions to deal with the situation, and negative or aggressive responses, like um, I drive right, right up on the other driver's bumper. So to explore how participants, um, how many participants engaged in adaptive and aggressive responses, we again grouped them into the three groups, and we found that participants often utilize adaptive and a positive responses when they feel angry while driving. Um, and we found that most participants reported that they utilize aggressive responses almost never. So here's a list of the different adaptive and aggressive responses that people reported using when they feel angry while driving. The most frequent adaptive responses were things like telling myself it's not worth getting involved and telling myself it's not worth getting mad at or accepting that there are frustrating situations. Those were some of the positive and adaptive responses. The most frequent aggressive responses to feeling angry while driving were making negative comments about the other driver out, out loud, swearing at another driver out loud, and driving a lot faster. So further, we then wanted to compare participants' engagement in pro-social and aggressive behaviors and their adaptive and aggressive responses. And when we compared those, the pattern held. That is, participants reported engaging in pro-social driving behaviors significantly more frequently than aggressive driving behaviors, and participants reporting using, using adaptive responses to feeling angry significantly more often than using aggressive responses. When we explored the correlations between those two validated scales to understand their relationship, we also found what we expected, that engaging in pro-social driving behaviors more frequently was associated with less frequent aggressive driving behavior. And more frequent engagement in adaptive responses to feeling angry was associated with less frequent ag um, aggressive responses. To get a better understanding of the perception that participants had about aggressive driving, we asked participants how often they thought various groups drove in aggressive ways. You know, most drivers that they ride with, most drivers like themselves, most drivers in their community, and most drivers in the US. And what we found was that participants perceived increasingly that people more socially distanced from themselves engaged in aggressive driving more frequently. So participants perceive more frequent aggressive driving amongst most drivers in their community than most drivers like themselves. And the most frequent aggressive driving from most drivers in the U.S. We learned that perceptions are important participants who engaged in aggressive driving actions more frequently perceived that others also engaged in aggressive driving more often. And we also learned that perceived disapproval might be an important way to reduce aggressive driving. Overall, participants described that other people would disapprove of them engaging in aggressive driving actions. And participants who engaged in aggressive driving actions more frequently perceived greater approval of aggressive driving behavior by others. And then finally, we know that with aggressive driving that there are at least two parties and two vehicles involved. And we wanted to understand not only just the frequency of engaging in aggressive driving actions, but also how often participants were experiencing others driving aggressively. So we provided example actions that represented aggressive driving behaviors, and we asked how often participants experienced aggressive driving by asking how often that happened to them, and how often they had seen this happen to someone else. Participants reported witnessing aggressive driving happen to someone else significantly more than they had experienced aggressive driving happen to themselves while driving. And what we learned through our analysis is, is that those who witnessed or experienced aggressive driving more often 
believed that others drove aggressively more frequently. So this provides a really brief overview of some of the key things that we learned in our survey on aggressive driving. But there is more data and analysis in that final report. So if you're curious about the data and want more information, um, the final report will be helpful to you there. So we set out then to take what we learned in the literature review and the contextual model and our survey to create guidance for traffic safety professionals to bolster their current traffic safety efforts with strategies um, that address aggressive driving. And based on the survey, um, based on the survey, uh, the results of the survey, we identified four ways that traffic safety efforts can be bolstered to address aggressive driving. Those are things like growing pro-social driving, using strategies that support cognitive reappraisal and those adaptive or positive responses that we talked about earlier, challenging misperceptions, and increasing perceived disapproval through bystander engagement. So we created a resource document that dives into each of these ways to support traffic safety professionals as they address aggressive driving. And inside this resource document, you're gonna find information about what we learned from the survey on aggressive driving amongst adults in the US and many of the things that we talked about today. You'll also find guiding questions to help you identify opportunities that you can use to enhance your existing efforts in traffic safety to support reducing aggressive driving and ideas and actions that could be integrated into your existing traffic safety efforts. So I thought I would just show you one example from the resource document, although there are a variety in there. Um, but one way that, and I thought I'd just show it to you, um, one way we we learned from our survey results to bolster existing traffic safety efforts is to grow pro-social driving. So in the resource document, we talk about what pro-social driving is, what does it look like, and then what we learned from our survey of US drivers to support that idea. So pro-social driving, for example, is a pattern of safe driving behaviors that protect the well-being of passengers, other drivers, and pedestrians, and promotes cooperation with others in the driving environment. So examples are things like using turn signals, braking slowly, paying attention to traffic while driving, or paying extra care around pedestrians. And from our survey, we learned over 90% of participants report engaging in these pro-social driving behaviors often while driving. And promoting these pro-social behaviors might be an avenue to reduce aggressive driving as engaging in pro-social driving makes aggressive driving less likely. So next we offer um, guiding questions that traffic safety professionals can use to think about pro-social driving within their context. So questions like what current strategies or countermeasures or campaigns promote pro-social driving or how can your current strategies be bolstered to increase pro-social driving? We also provide ideas and actions that, that you could take or integrate. So for example, for pro-social driving, you could think about infusing some of your communication strategies and traffic safety campaigns with promoting some of those pro-social driving behaviors that align with the strategy or the campaign that you're implementing. So, for example, if your current traffic safety efforts or campaign focuses on occupant protection, you could think or consider ways to promote pro-social driving that align with occupant protection. That might be something like partnering with public health on car seat inspection events or promoting pro-social driving behaviors amongst parents or partnering with your local EMS events that focus on occupant protection and thinking or considering ways to promote some of those pro-social behaviors that align with well-being of everyone, like asking others to wear a seatbelt in the vehicle or not using your cell phone while driving. 
So those are just some ideas or examples of ways that you could think about what are your current traffic safety efforts and how could we infuse those with what we know um, might help to reduce aggressive driving. So I show you that. Um, I showed you just a glimpse into what it looks like um, to grow pro-social driving as a way to bolster your existing efforts. And each of these other ways, so using strategies that support cognitive reappraisal and adaptive responses, challenging misperceptions, and increasing perceived disapproval through bystander engagement, follow this same structure. And so I would encourage you to check out this resource document. Again, it's on that Department of uh, Transportation, uh, Montana Department of Transportation's website. Um, and, and then in addition to this resource, we created a uh, PowerPoint presentation that highlights many of the things that we talked about today. And it can be augmented and adapted for your traffic, for you specifically, to talk about aggressive driving and what we learned from this project. And then also the final report, which is a deep dive into all the things that we learned in this project. So like I said, um, this webinar today really did focus on um, phase one of the aggressive driving project and the Traffic Safety Culture Pool Fund and us at the Center for Health and Safety Culture have really envisioned this aggressive driving project in two phases. The first phase to really learn more about aggressive driving to establish some of those foundational components of the behavior and then to move forward in a second phase to apply what we learned to develop and test media messages to reduce the incidence of aggressive driving and to develop strategies that support bystanders in intervening to prevent and reduce aggressive driving. So I really appreciate you spending time to join this webinar today. I'm excited to share what we learned and hope that you'll be excited to go to those resources and check them out as well. And I do want to now spend a little bit of time if there are questions in the chat um, that we can talk through. Gary, there's been a couple of questions about definitions um, and a little bit of chat about that. One question that just came in from Jason, when we talk about impacting other people, do those other people need to be outside of the driver's vehicle based on the definition or would it include passengers in the same vehicle in that context? And I know we talked about whether it had to be another vehicle, right? Like if aggressive driving could impact pedestrians or people maybe even in their front yards, but this question is about people in the same vehicle. Yeah, I think it's in the context of others um, and that it impacts others. Um, so I, I, I think we, I don't know, Bridget, I, I'm trying to think back when we were really diving in to the context of others. Um, we, I, I think it would include passengers in the vehicle um, because of the safety. Of, so I'm thinking of specifically Speeding, for example, it definitely impacts potentially the passenger, uh, where if you're speeding and no one's around and you're by yourself, maybe that's a risky, um, a risky behavior, but wouldn't be considered aggressive. Yeah, and I think Jason agrees. He's saying passengers are impacted often by the behaviors of drivers, um, especially yeah. in the context of children or something like that. One other thing we talked about with the definition too is this like deliberate intentionality or disregard for safety, right? So oftentimes we think about that aggressive driving behavior is intentionally seeking to harm someone else, but it might also just be this deliberate disregard for their safety. So it does have to be sort of that intentionality, but it could be just disregarding safety, especially if we think about like kiddos in the car or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple of folks have asked about the slide deck. They can reach out via email and we can provide that and we can see if we can put it on MDT's website as well. But I did put our email addresses in the chat. And so if you're looking for that slide deck, feel free to just send over a note. And then if folks have any other questions, you can certainly reach out via email. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining today. Um, we'd love to keep this conversation going. Um, reach out to us at the center um, for, a, any conversation related to this or traffic safety culture, we're very interested. So thank you so much for joining today.